All right, guys, we are in week six of our series. Say it with me. One, two, three. Faith. Come on, guys. Faith. We're week six of our series. One, uh, one two, three. Faith. Yeah. All right, there you go. Not that faith. I'm sure. No, we still love you. But anyways, we're on week six of our faith series. And so if you missed last week, listen, if you missed last week, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it. Just go check it out on YouTube or on Facebook. But let's get right into the message tonight. Now, I have a question for you guys. Who here just likes to laugh? <laughs> Who just likes to laugh? You know, laughing is really good, you know. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, that could just simply make us laugh. You know, if it's watching a video on YouTube, <laughs> watching a comedy movie, stand-up comedy, a funny meme, or even no matter how hard you try, you try not to laugh whenever someone else falls. <laughs> so, and you know, you know, even watching funny videos just brings out laughter. So I got some funny videos I'll try to make you laugh. So here we go. Try it out. Well, I woke up to go get me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life, and then the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. What does your um, your dad and whatnot think about all this? Because I'm sure that he's an athlete. Is he an athlete, your dad? Yeah, my dad was an athlete, but now he's um pretty fat. What do you think about the ride? It was great. And apparently, I've never been on live television before, but. Apparently, sometimes I don't watch the sh I don't watch the news because I'm a kid, and apparently every time, apparently Grandpa just gives me a remote after we watch the Powerball. It's the Powerball. <laughs> Tell me about the ride. What did you think about the ride? Well, it was great. Why? Because apparently you're spinning around, and apparently every time you get dizzy, yeah, that's all you do is get dizzy. Is it fun? <laughs> yeah. And I've never ever been on live television. I never ever be on live television. Are you excited? Yeah, and apparently I only went down the super slide. When I went down the water, I was scared half to death. I just freak out. Okay. Thousands of passengers across the East Coast, of course, had to alter their plans. And we spoke to one kid who was trying to cope with the delay. I'm just sitting there on my iPod. It's just so frustrating. I want to be in Florida getting a tan on my back. Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. I'm ducking and everything. Die in the house, I'm, I got scared. I dropped my hot pocket. My mom thinks I'm a baby, so I can't walk to school sometimes. And also, she thinks I need a need protective gear when I need to ride a bike. You probably do. I think I agree with your mom. I know how to ride a bike already, even without protective gear. Oh, did anyone laugh at those? Any of those? Anybody? No? I saw of you. All right. Well, man, I know how you. I don't. I know how you don't laugh at those. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I dropped my hot pocket. But did you know? But here's the thing. Did you know that, you know, that here's some health benefits for laughing? You know, you know, when you laugh, it actually helps, it helps your heart. It boosts your immune system. It makes you happier. It reduces stress. What did you get? Smiling only takes one muscle of your body. It does. There you go. You know, laughing reduces stress. I think that's, that, that's to me, that's an awesome. And also relaxes your body. And, you know, that's why people say that l laughing is the best medicine. It's really, I think it really is. So, my wife will laugh at me because I have a funny story. When I was in high school, I was pretty much a jerk at the time because, and I wanted to, and so we were at, my wife, my wife and I at the time, we were not dating, we were just, friends and so we were at her home church and i wanted to attempt a slam dunk i wanted to dunk okay so i thought to myself you know what first off i'm too short you know i'm like i'm, I'm too short i'm gonna get a chair and so i need some uh, so i had someone hold the chair for me so i can go step on the chair and go for a dunk 
And I had a, fr a friend at the time was holding the chair, which I now, even to this day, I still cannot believe I had this person hold the chair. But anyway, so I'm there, all pumped, all psyched. I run up, and I, the minute I step to the chair, he releases the chair, and the, I stepped I, I, to the metal chairs, and I stepped on it, and the chair just bends, and I just fall flat on my face. Like, I'm like... You know, the chair is all bent and broken. He didn't hold on to the chair. She's laughing and crying galore while I'm like in pain. Like, man, I'm... And so she's like, we like, ah, 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 like laughing galore. And so, and I'm like, that's not funny. Well, for me, I have another story that reminds me. Um, when we were dating at the time, we had a thing called Park Adventures. And so my wife and I had this idea at the time. She's like, hey, I'm going to go on the playground. And go on the she goes on the playground. I'm like, okay. And so we're there hanging out. We're just talking. And she goes out on the playground. And she believes that I, quote, unquote, pushed her, which everyone in my family and her family knows that did not happen. So she trips and rolls her ankle. And she's like, oh, and she's laughing. She's like, oh, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. And so I have to run a quarter, half a mile, get the car, pick her up, take her to my house, get her, do first aid and safety, wrap it with ice. And then her father had a rule that, you know, we were not allowed to see each other at the time. So my cousin had to, uh, had to, so my cousin had to drive her because I couldn't because she would get mad. But I still find it funny that she's like, well, how about your ankle? She's like, I rolled it. And so, you know, maybe probably, you know, so the laughing is, I guess, like I said, it's a very, very funny thing. It just, just brings it out of you. But did you know something else? Something also when I'm studying scripture, did you know that God has a sense of humor? Did y'all know that? Yes, he does. He does. He I'm from, gave me that's, that's, that's the... You know, like, come on, like, like here, here's, the thing, here's the thing, when God created the animals, I think about, here, the clownfish, funny, or, like, thank you, I'm about to get there, like, behold, the platypus, right there, and it feasts your eyes on the sloth, you know, sloth, right, but if I can be real, there's actually a verse in 1 Samuel 5, and check out the story. So we read about the Israelites who took the Ark of the Covenant and they were using it at the time. They were using it as this good luck charm. Like, you know, if we take the Ark of the Covenant, God is with us. We're going to win the battle. That did not happen because apparently the Philistines end up whooping the butts and t took the Ark to their temple. And they put the Ark next to the, 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 their idol named Dagon. Am I saying it right? Dagon. And so they're like, hey, we got two gods. We got Dagon and the and the God of the Israelites. And so they put it there. The next day, Dagon's on the floor, flat on his face, kneeling, uh, knelting before the Ark of the Covenant. So the Philistine's like, okay, that's really weird. So they put it back up, right? Put it back up. And then the next day, same situation, but this time his head and his hands were cut off. I'm like, they're like, okay, this is creepy. And so they ended up pushing the ark on a car. They're like, no, we don't want to deal with that no more because that is ridiculous. And so, you know, that epic moment was an example of just God laughing at the foolishness of those who would like to oppose him. Like, oh, yeah, you really want to challenge me? <laughs> yeah, let's see, what, how, see how that happens, you know. But, you, but, you, but you know, here's the thing. Well, tonight, we're, did you know that there is someone who laughed at God's plan for an amazing promise? Did y'all know that? This person had the audacity to laugh at the plan of God. It's really ridiculous. And the person we're going to be talking about is none other than Abraham's wife, Sarah. So if you have your Bibles, join me in Hebrews 11. And the verse will be on the screen. So if you have your Bibles if you have your phones, go to Hebrews 11. Go on the screen, please. And I will, like Joseph, do you mind reading Hebrews 11.11, 11, please? By faith, even Sarah herself, when she was unable to have children, received the power to conceive offspring. 
even though she was past the age since she considered that one who had promised was faithful. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and pray really quick, guys. Father Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. I pray that your word would be clear. Let Jesus be highly exalted. And those tonight here in person watching on Facebook or also on YouTube will be blessed. In Christ we pray. Amen. So, we're going to look at Sarah's story. Now, Sarah is the wife of Abraham. And when I was studying this, studying this passage of Scripture, I came up with kind of like six things that we can learn from Sarah's story. And each of the points is backed up with Scripture. And so, here is your first point. We're going to look at the verse again. The first point is this. And so the, the title of my message is, Sarah, I laugh to remember. I laugh to remember. And so, the first point that I have tonight is this, that God fills us with His power. Y'all watching? Y'all focus? So if I say, here's, here's, here's what I do, I'm going to do, for the sake of getting y'all attention. If I say this phrase, do I have your attention, I just want you to say, yes. Okay, let's try it out. Do I have your attention? Yes. yes. Do I have your attention? Yes. All right, pretty good. So, so God fills us up with his power. Let's look at the verse really quick. So Hebrews 11, so this is what it says. It says, by faith, even Sarah herself, when she was unable to have children, received, she, look at the screen, y'all, look at the screen, received power. To conceive offspring, even though she was past the age, since she considered that the one who had promised was faithful. So, you, it wasn't her ability. Y'all, she was an old, like, I, I'm, okay, no offense, she was about, like, lower than, than older than the Karen, y'all. For real. Yeah. But guess what? God used her in a mighty way to show people, even us today, that all things are possible with God. Yeah, absolutely. And so, we maybe we think, maybe we think it's within our own ability. You know, many people think like, oh, it's my ability to do whatever. Like, it's up to me. No, no, no. God is the one that fills you with His power. He's the one that gives you His strength. Do I have your attention? Yes. Do I have your attention? Yes. I hope so. All right. So, so God fills us up with His power. Second point. We're looking at the same verse. God turns God, slide please, God, slide please. God turns impossibility to a faithful guarantee. I'm going to say that one more time. God turns impossibility to a faithful guarantee. We'll go back to that verse again. Hebrews 11, 11. Look at it, look, check this out. Look at the, high, look at the, uh, the, the part that, that I kind of underlined. So by faith, even Sarah herself, when she was unable to have children, received power... Right? From God to conceive offspring, even though she was past the age, since she considered that the one who had promised was faithful. Understand, this situation was impossible. So basically, God was telling Sarah and Abraham, you, y'all are going to have a son. And they're like, there ain't no way that's going to happen. That is impossible, God. We are like way past the age of childbearing. For real, God. Like seriously, like, are you trying to make a joke out of this? Are you trying to like make fun of us? Because if so, it's not funny. You know, but God here, and we look at, and, it's, and I love how the message, the message, uh, uh, in Hebrews 11, it says this. Here's the thing. This is verse 11. Because she believed the one, the one being God, the one who made a promise would do what he said. And so God was telling Sarah, you're going to have a son, and it's going to happen. And it's funny how God tells us, you know, something that's going to happen, and we go, that's it, you know? Yeah, right. For real. Like, it ain't going to happen. Like, it's impossible. But yet, God turns the impossibility into a faithful guarantee. Now we're going to go to Genesis 16, and we see a third, uh, leads us to our third point. A third point is this, that when you rush God, this is very close to this, when you rush God and put things in your own hands, it's no longer God's blessing, but an altered self-blessing. I'm going to say it one more time. Uh, young ladies, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm speaking to you all specifically. When you rush and put things in your own hands, it's no longer God's blessing, but an altar self-blessing. 
Young ladies, oh man, I just can't wait to have a relationship. I just want to have a crush on a boy. I just want to be in a relationship. I just want to have affection. I, I'm not looking at you. Yes, you are. I'm not even looking at you. I'm not even looking at you. Exactly. So there's, there's there's some. I'm not just you, Faith. There's some you or some of your friends who may not even talk about it. Like, oh man, when am I gonna have a boyfriend? When am I gonna be in a relationship? When am I gonna, you know, share that love and all that stuff? And you know, and we and we fill ourselves. And so, and God says, you know what? I have that special person, but you just gotta wait on me. I don't wanna wait. But guess what? Again, when you rush God's promises, it's no, it's no longer His blessing. It's, no, it's, it's contaminated by your selfishness. selfish. If you don't believe me, let's look at the text. Genesis 16, 1 through 2. And I'm going to have uh, faith. Excuse me that look. Faith, read verses 1 through 2. Sarai. Hagar. Hagar, sorry. You're good, you're good, you're good. I'm sorry, you're good. I ain't judging you. Go ahead, continue. So, okay, but in this case, it's Sarah, because they, they haven't changed your name yet. So, this is what Sarah is saying. He, she, listen, listen, very closely. This point will make sense. So here's so Sarah saying, since the Lord had prevented me, you know what? God promised it, and now it's not happening. He's somehow holding back on his promise. He, he said it, but I guess he's trying to make a good joke out of me. And so instead, since God is, quote-unquote, putting me on hold on the situation, I'm going to go ahead and put things in my own hands. I have a slave girl named Hagar. So talking to her husband, is like, here, here. Here's my, my, my slave girl. Maybe through her, I can build a family. She's like, you know, I ain't going to come through me. It's not. It's impossible. It ain't, I'm like 100 some years old, 90 some years old. ain't going to happen. And here's a young, healthy, strong slave woman here. Maybe through her, her children can be my children. And so whatever God's blessing was for her, it was no longer a blessing. It was an altered one because, because of the rushed disobedience from Sarah, Hagar becomes pregnant, and, and, and she's now even more of a fit. Hi, this is not my child, and why am I so frustrated? It's because you, you, because you couldn't wait for God's promise. So young ladies, young men, when you think, you're, oh, I'm waiting for a relationship, please wait on God. Just trust Him. Because the minute you put things in your own hands, the minute you're like, oh, this, maybe this guy is the one. But I guarantee you that guy may have a bunch of red flags that you don't even know about because you don't not willing to create boundaries in your own life. I know I'm starting to sidetrack here. But anyways, so again, Sarah refused to wait on the Lord's promise and decided to put things in her own hands. And the consequence of that was that now Hagar's like, look at my child, look at my child, look at my child. And kind of bragging to Sarah. And here Sarah's like... Oh, now it's even worse. Why? Because she refused to wait on, go wait on God. Which leads to the fourth point. Doubts can sometimes be covered with a laugh. You don't believe me? Let's look at the verse. Genesis 21. Sorry, sorry Genesis 18. 10 through 15. And I'm going to have... First, can you read this verse, my friend? Verses 10 through 15, all right? Next verse. Right. Nope, you're, you're, there you go. Abraham and Sarah were only getting on for years. Sarah has passed the age of childbearing. Well, so, so she left her, so after I am, after I am worn, how my Lord, my Lord rules, will I have to, Next verse. And so, all right, so, so I'll read that. I think I, I forgot to add the verses, but I'll finish the rest. So here, so Genesis 
So Genesis uh, 18, let me get that really quick. Here we go. So the part here, so here we go. So she laughs, right? But the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Saying, can I really have a baby when I am old? Is anything impossible for the Lord? At, uh, at the appointed time, I will come back to you, and in about a year, she will have a son. Sarah denied it. I did not laugh. She said it because she was afraid, but he replied, no, you did laugh. <laughs> See, I love God's humor right there. And so, I, I love how the message puts it. So, in verse 12, and so, so Sarah laughed within herself. So she didn't say it out loud. This is within, her, within herself, t- talking to herself. She goes, an old woman like me get pregnant with this old man of a husband. Like, I'm like, whoa, like, you're being savage, like, for real. Like, he's like, she's like, for real, like, really? I'm going to have a child by my husband who's like so, much, so many years old. He's already going to do this? And, and God's like, why are you laughing? But still, even then, but even still, though, in the eyes of our culture, like in our, in our generation, it's like, man, that, they're, like, they're like way past grandparent age, for real. How old were they when, um... Well, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there in, in a minute. And so, and so, here's the thing, here's the thing that I, I, was, I was studying, is that we all doubt sometimes. And for Sarah, she was literally, like, God said, literally said, go back to that verse, go back to the first verse, he said... God even said, I will certainly come back to you in about a year's time. So what does that mean? How long is it going to take? A year. In a year. So God even is already saying, in one year. It was, it's not a prediction. This is going to happen. In a year, you're going to have a child. Right? So it, God's already establishing a date. He, he, and, and God can do that sometimes. In this case, in this story, God established a time uh, for Sarah. In a year... You're going to have a son with your husband. And this is God talking to Abraham about this. And Sarah, of course, being the sneaky one, is hearing the conversation. And she's like, I think, and when she heard it, she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> so funny. Comedy here. Really? Like, I'm going to have a child with my husband who's super old? And I'm old? <laughs> Ain't going to happen. And God's like, in my own language. Why are you laughing, bro? Why are you laughing? Laugh it up. Like, he literally said that up to me in my own language. He's like, laugh it up. Just watch. In a year, you're going to have a son. Which leads you to my fifth point, second to last point. God always keeps his promises. He always does. And I love this verse. Do you mind, Karen, do you mind reading Genesis 21, 1 and 2? Go to the verses, please. They're on, the, they're on the screen. Okay. The Lord came to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abram in his old age at the appointed time God had told him. So there you go. God even said, well, okay, uh, um, I lost your name. I lost your name. Sid, <laughs> what was the prediction that God gave to Sarah in how, how, many, um, how many months? Or how, how much time? In a year. Did it happen? Yes. So God said, so, so everything happened, came to Sarah as he said. Year passed by. You're going to have a son, just like I said. And everything, and he did for Sarah what he had promised. God don't back down on his promises. In all of scripture, God has always been faithful and kept his promises. Since the beginning of time, even to our generation. When God says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you, that's a promise He keeps guaranteed. When God says, I will be with you, guess what? It still applies today. God always delivers on what He says. Now, sometimes we can make promises, and go, you know what, I promise this, I promise that. And guess what? We're so bad, our culture is the worst of keeping promises. You're not going to look back and begin to look back at our parents like, oh, I promise this, I promise that. And guess what? My parents aren't perfect. They forget, and, they, and I'm so heartbroken because you promise. But we're never going to have that feeling with God. Because in Sarah's case, 
Sarah could have doubted, man, what if, and, and maybe in the middle of the, middle of the year, man, what if God really doesn't, doesn't do it? And, and guess what? Year passes by, God's like, let's go. It's about to happen. God keeps his promises, just like the verse says. Which leads us to my last and final point. God will use moments in our lives to remind us that he can certainly, not a maybe, not a 20%, not a prediction. No, it's certain. He can certainly do the impossible. And we see this in Genesis 21.6, and I'm going to have Emily read that one verse. I like, the, I like the message version. It says, God has blessed me with laughter. And all who get the news will laugh with me. I like that. Because here's the thing. Sarah bore a son. The son's name is Isaac. And the Hebrew word for Isaac means, literally means one who laughs. So every time Sarah looks at Isaac... She'll go, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember God did that. I remember, I remember God reminded me. And, and, and I, I, again, I think God had a sense of humor. Name your son Isaac. So every time you see him, you're going to laugh that you laughed at what I could do. I could do the impossible. And so here's the thing. You'd be like, Andrew, what has laughter and faith got to do with anything? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm very glad you asked. Because a lot of us have laughed at the things that God may have said to you. God may have spoken uh, to your heart. God may have revealed something to you. And you're like, <laughs> no, God. You want to use me, God? <laughs> I have so many issues in my life. I have so many red flags. You cannot use me. So therefore, you made a mistake. I'll tell you what. Number one, God never makes mistakes. And number two, God can use anybody, anybody, and all of the above. I'll be real for you, very honest with you. Uh, a few years ago, um, I was struggling in college because, and I wanted to get to the College of Education. But in order to get there, I had to take the PPR exam for teachers. And you only have five attempts to take it. And here are my friends that I'm in class with. There were like 30 of us. 29 out of 30 got in. Guess who's the one that could not get in? This guy. So, I was like, well, why is I took the test. I studied and I studied no matter how hard I tried. I couldn't do it. So, my dad was like, you know what? Maybe you should get tested. I'm like, okay. So, we went, I went to a psychologist. And I did some tests. And he's like, I don't know if you didn't realize this, but you're on the spectrum of autism. You may not show it sometimes, but you have it. And here I am like, man, how could God use me? A uh, minor autistic kid. I can't even look down. I stutter. I, I, I can't even. I'm always energetic and people think I'm weird. How can God use me? I'll tell you what. You, you're looking at a testimony of what God has done in my life. God has used my, the gifts that he has given me at a camp where thousands of kids got to follow Jesus. I got to work at a, a, a coaching school, a, a school where I get to coach volleyball and basketball and a sport that I love. God has always been in step with me. And it's not through my merits. It's not through my abilities. God literally said to me, I'm going to use you and you're going to do the impossible through me. And literally, you may think, Andrew, you understand, I have ADHD, I have this, I have a mental disorder. You know what? I'm so shy. Guess what? Did you know Moses? We'll talk, Vicky will talk about him in a few weeks. She'll preach on that. You know Moses was a stutter and a shy guy? For real. He couldn't hold a conversation. He was a, uh, the Bible says that he was a stutter. And he had to use his brother to interpret it. But guess what? God still used them. So you may think, so you're not excused to be a vessel for God. God's like, I'm going to use you and your ability, your true character that, that I have given you, you get to present it to another generation. 
And I'll tell you what, listen very closely with the eyes on me. I hope I have your attention. When you hold back on God's calling, you're showing disobedience. Like this, this Friday, I hear we're going to have almost a lot of students come in. Guess what? It was through your efforts. Hey guys, come to, come to, come to our church for an event. Guess what? God used you. You didn't use your excuse. Oh, but I'm too shy. No. You persevered and had the courage to go, you know what? Let's come to this event. Let's hear about it. Have fun. At the end, I'm going to have a small little, little devotional and I hope that message will stick into their minds. And maybe, just maybe, a seed that can grow into a, 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 a blossom into a beautiful flower and they can go, where can I receive Jesus? But it all started with what? Your first step of inviting someone and so my desire for this youth ministry is to gather. So maybe after this event, maybe we can get 10, 15 more people and have this whole room filled with students and they can have the opportunity to hear the gospel.